Hi everyone, Cayman Reynolds here. Let's show you how we're going to insulate a migratory lid on the cheap. And that cute little bee right there is gathering a little bit of ultra bee that we set out for a little fun in this yard today. So also stick around. We're fixing to hit 10,000 subscribers. Thanks everyone from um, everywhere. I mean, goodness, people are across the world and it's really humbling. You know, we don't know everything, but we hope to point you in some directions that'll help encourage you to be more successful with your bees, try some new things out, point you in the directions of other folks that are very successful in beekeeping as well. And when we hit 10,000 subscribers, shortly after we're going to have a video and everyone's going to get a chance to stick their name below and we're going to give away a American-made date and smoker. I think they're the best. We're going to be giving away some a hive tool, a couple other tools, and sending a little bit of our honey to some lucky person. So. Anyways, thanks again, everybody. But let's get to this colony right here. It's the fourth day of December, and it is warm enough for a t-shirt. It's been pretty cold, though, but it goes back and forth here in Tennessee quite a bit. And, you know, it's just nothing like what it is up north. And so this is why I kind of think it's ridiculous that... Let's get off my bees. That some folks in this area think that bees will die from the cold weather. Healthy bees don't die in Tennessee in the winter. Um, they just don't. Even a little, They can handle even a little bit of moisture down here, a decent bit of moisture. And I get this question a lot about the type of lids that I use, and 90% of our hives aren't going to have any insulation, they're not going to have any wicking material, but they have the most important things. And that's a good, healthy population of bees, just like this one, and they have plenty of stores. Okay, you're going to have to leave me alone, girls. All right, so let's get into this hive right here, but we're going to do this one a little bit differently. We're tinkering around with insulation, and I think it has merits. Um, I just don't know if we're going to fully commit. All right, so look down in here at these bees. Already popped the lid, as you can tell. Even scraped the lid because I thought I'd save some time on the video. But we got a good bit of seams of bees over in this area. Now let's drop down in the next box and just see what they look like. box is pretty old but we're making it count now look at all those bees down in there look at that boy that is what we like to see right there you start talking about that queen brooding up in February on that maple pollen oh man there's gonna be a lot of bees in this box come March Oy. And there's plenty of honey up top. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to insulate this colony. And maybe it'll help out a lot, and maybe we do decide to try that out. We've got about 50 of the double bubble insulative material, and then we have about a dozen of, well, hang on a second, of these five R-value boards. Now, if you're really far up north, some people like Michael Palmer use something that's like twice as thick as this, and you, you'll definitely want to consider that. Of course, hopefully, if you needed to do that up there, you did that probably about a month and a half ago. So, this video is a little late for some of you this year. So, we can't just stick the board like this. The bees will chew it up. So, what are we going to do? I don't have inner covers, hardly. I've got like two or three of them around. So, we're going to be using this material here, and I'm telling you, if you go to Hobby Lobby, and you get their 50% off fabric days, you can get canvas for a very reasonable price. And this is gonna last a very long time. In certain countries and other places, even folks in America, they're using canvas for inner covers. And I'm pretty excited just to see how they work. I've never tried them before, but I know they work. And so we got that right there. Now the bees, they can't, they're not gonna be chewing through that. I'm gonna take this board right here and just pop it right here. Now, if you have a telescoping cover, you just set that on, throw a brick on top, and you're great. You walk away. But we don't have any more telescoping covers. I think I only had about four or five to begin with, and they're already used in some form or fashion. So we are going to be throwing this lid back on top. What are we going to do about all the rain? Because we get a lot of rain here in Tennessee. We don't get any snow, unfortunately. I know some of you northern guys are like, you're so lucky, but I love snow. I'm originally from Indiana, it's where I was born, spent most of my life down here in Tennessee. But I remember as a kid, you know, four and five foot snow drifts and sometimes even deeper. And, you know, I was even smaller back then. And 
Yeah, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We, we had a lot of crazy times in that snow. So what are we going to do about this? Because we get so many inches of rain during the winter, it's going to get down in here. We don't want it getting to our bees. So we're just going to take some leftover tar paper from when I made Laurel put the roof on our house. I helped. So. <laughs> And we're just going to throw this on right here. Now, if you're wanting to wrap the entire colony, we are not the people. Oh, that cat. Goodness gracious. Mm -hmm. Ugh, claws on the chalkboard sound. Ugh. So, Michael Palmer has some videos, and there's a few others out there. But Michael Palmer wraps his entire hives with paper and does his insulative board. If you're really far north, it would pay dividends. Good dividends to listen to Michael Palmer. I don't know that much about northern beekeeping, but... I don't care about insulating this whole box. All I'm going to be doing is just making sure we're not getting any moisture around that area. So we're going to be taking the staple gun here, and we're just going to be basically folding this like a Christmas present. An ugly looking Christmas present. And we're going to be stapling this all the way around. Now there's certain types of tape that will work on tar paper, but a lot of them don't stick very good. So I'm not going to go ahead and staple this because it'll probably take a while and probably be excruciatingly embarrassing for everyone involved because it's my first time. However, just make sure you get it tied down good. Some folks even know how to just tie it down with string. I'm not that artful and skilled in that department. So just get her secure. Come back in spring and take it off. You know, put your brick on top of this, of course. And... You know, you don't see a lot of bricks on ours, but that's because we don't live in a very windy area. I've never had a lid blow off that I can remember. I just, I can't ever remember one of these lids blowing off. Um, bees glue them down pretty good. We don't have high winds here. We have lots of trees and hills blocking everything. So anyways, this is just to kind of stimulate maybe a little bit of thought. I mean, goodness, it's December here, but even if it's freezing and you feel like this would help your bees, you can do that. So thanks for watching the videos. we got a lot more stuff fixing to happen. See you later.